is just your first impression. What do you see in your mind's eye? A forest. A forest. Describe this forest for me. What does it look like? It has um, narrow paths mm -hmm. and um, white, uh, small flowers everywhere mm -hmm. and light leaves. The trees have light leaves. Beautiful. It's a little bit wild, but mm -hmm. it has a small path. And I'm walking there with my dog. Very good. Very good. And as you're walking, how old are you there? Um, I'm 37. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's see what is in this forest. I'd like for you to continue walking into the forest and see what happens next. Where do you go? Around the corner. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's there around the corner. We're going to be using our different eyes to see. Is there someone there to greet you? What's there? I don't see anybody, just mm. more forest. More forest, all right. So I want you now to connect with your emotions in this forest. And as you connect with the emotions, let's see what you pick up from the forest. What do you feel from the forest? Uh, love. Love. Very good. Um, calm, love, mm. and mm -hmm. connecting. And connecting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there anything else interesting about this? No. No. Very good. So now we're going to close that scene mm -hmm. and go to another memory of something that impacted the lifetime of Sandra. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number one, we will be at that memory. Taking a deep breath in now on five, going back through time and space to another time and another place. Four, to a memory that affected the lifetime of Sandra. Three, drifting and floating through time. Two, allowing the images to come. And one, be there now. Trust your first impression. Where are you? Um, my uh, bathroom. Mm -hmm. When I was small, uh, my bed. Mm -hmm. And it's at night, and uh, everybody's asleep. But I can't wake them up. Mm -hmm. And I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what happens next. What do you do next? Where do you go? I feel like I uh, um, have to stay on my bed mm -hmm. because um, I can't. I uh, when I step off my bed, something will grab me. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what is under your bed. 
I'd like for you to separate yourself from that child and float underneath the bed and see what's there. What do you see? What is there? I think I see black hands. All right. So you're with me now. And I'd like for you to go ahead and shine a light on those hands and find out what those hands are for, who they belong to. Who do those hands belong to? When I shine a light on them, they're not black anymore. Mm -hmm. What color are they now? Uh, a little bit um, like um, a light brownish mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. So let's shine on the light to see what's attached to those hands. Who's under that bed? I don't know, but I feel so scared. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who's there. You have the courage. I don't know why it's under my bed. Mm -hmm. So I want you to ask. Ask these hands, why are you there? They want to take me. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who they belong to. I want you to face those hands and I want you to bring up all of the courage that you, as this little girl, have. And you tell them, you come out right now and show yourself. Who is it? Um. The first thing that I think I see is they look um, a bit reptilian-like. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you ask them now, what are you doing under my bed? And they just want to take me away, but... You ask them where they want to take you. You have the right to know. Where are they taking you? They'd say with us, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It so I want you to ask them if they have ever taken you before. Have they ever taken you before? Let's find out. Ask them. You're brave. What do they say? I think they say. Mm -hmm. So let's find out why it is that you are so afraid of going. Let's find out a little bit more about this. I'm going to go with you today and be right by your side. I'm going to count from five back to one and we will be at that memory of where they take you. Five going through time and space now, traveling. Four. Three. Two. One. Be there now. Where are you? Look around you. 
What is this place? It, it feels colder there. It feels colder. Mm -hmm. I don't see much detail. Mm -hmm. So I want you to feel it. I want you to feel what's happening. Use your inner eyes and tell me what's going on. Where have you been taken? What is this cold place? Can you see in this place? I, it is so cold I want my, uh, I feel that my muscles want to contract. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Um, the one that was uh, standing there, mm -hmm. still standing there, just standing there. So describe him to me. What does he look like? Um, very large. Mm -hmm. And um, brownish. Um, not warm. It's so cold there. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Let's find out why it's so cold. What is this place that's so cold? Look around you. It's, and when I try to look around, I see um, like I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very uh, blurry. So I'd like for, use, for you to use those inner eyes. Those eyes that are used when you're not inside your body. Look without your eyes. Look with your entire aura. Separate yourself and see from an outside point of view. What are they doing to this little girl? They are looking at me like they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do either. What is it so important about this little girl that they've taken her? What is special about her? The first thing that popped into mind is that the, I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's pretty silly, isn't it? Yes. Here they are wanting to take this little girl and now they have her and they don't know what to do with her. That's not very smart, is it? No, it, it feels so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's just looking, and I don't know what it's... So let's see what happens next. I would like for you to accelerate that scene and see what happens next. Be there now. I have a feeling that it is in um, some kind of foresty surrounding, mm -hmm. forest-like surrounding, and they're just showing me things. All right. I think that's the meaning. They just want to show things. So what type of things are they showing you? Just the surrounding, mm -hmm. the forest-like surrounding. Mm -hmm. I'm just walking beside it at them. Mm -hmm. it's How many are there? One big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see others now. Okay. And what is important about this forest? Is this where you live or somewhere else? 
um, trust your first impression. It's not where I live. All right. It's a light, a bit, it works in forest, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, and um, it looks very dark when we uh, look at it. Look at the beginning of the forest. Mm -hmm. So I'd and like for you to communicate with them telepathically, mind to mind, and ask them, where are we? It's their home. Mm -hmm. Where do they live? The first thing that pops into mind is Orion. Orion, very good. And why have they taken you to their home today? He just wants to show me. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Uh, he's just letting me walk beside him. He's just showing the forest. Mm -hmm. And now that you see that they live in a beautiful place, how do you feel about this? It's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable, but. I'm not afraid anymore. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that happens? No, we're just walking there. All right. So as you're walking in this forest, in this place called Orion, I would like for you to ask this reptile, how is he related to you? How does he know you? What do you hear in your mind? The first thing was family. Mm -hmm. What kind of family is he? Soul family. Mm -hmm. So why is it important? for you to be with them now. What did you need to know? That they're okay and positive and living in a beautiful environment. Mm -hmm. So why is it that he was scaring you underneath the bed? He was so proud of his environment, he wanted to see, he wanted to show me uh, He wanted to show me how beautiful it is there mm -hmm. And he was, um, like they, since I was there, they, uh, it has flourished and it was now very beautiful mm -hmm. And like he's proud of what, what's there. That's what he was, wanted to show me. Very good. Have you been in this place before? When No, because I think he showed me this because when I was there, it wasn't beautiful. Mm, very good. So now he is showing you how everything has changed. Yes. Very good. So now that you see this from different eyes, how does that make you feel? He's showing it, it that he's proud of it. Mm -hmm. And I understand how. Very good. Very good. I was so afraid of the hands under my bed. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now I would like for you to go back to that little girl who is so afraid of those hands. And I would like for the adult Sandra to speak to this little girl about those hands. Tell her what she needs to know. Talk to her now. What does little Sandra need to know? 
she doesn't need to be afraid anymore of the hands mm-hmm. because he wants to show me a, a beautiful place and mm-hmm. where he's proud of. It has flourished so much. Just something you have to see. Mm-hmm. So take a deep breath in. Little Sandra, what do you have to say to big Sandra? Are you afraid of those hands anymore? Now I understand. Mm-hmm. Very good. So the next time that you see those hands, how will you feel? It will be a little bit strange mm-hmm. <laughs> to have those hands mm-hmm. around my bed, but I will be brave enough to not be afraid. Very good. Take a deep breath in. Adult Sandra, go ahead and put your arms around this little girl and give her a big hug. And tell her what she needs to hear in order for her to feel safe. You're so brave. You don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So now, let's allow this little girl to begin to grow up in your arms. Feel her getting bigger and bigger in your arms as your hearts beat together, getting bigger and bigger until little Sandra is as big as you are and you are the same size. And I'd like for you to feel both of you melting together as one, knowing that she is safe within you now, feeling brave, being at peace, and you can now once again enjoy those little girl things without any fear. You can sleep comfortably and without any fear. Very good. So now let's close that scene and let's travel again through time and space to another time and another place that impacted the lifetime of Sandra. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number, number one, I will touch your forehead and you will be in this place. Taking a deep breath in now, five, going back in time to another time that impacted the lifetime of Sandra. Four, getting younger and younger. Three, allow the images to come. Two, almost there now and one. Be there now. Are you indoors or outdoors? I feel like I'm indoors. Indoors. This place indoors, is it daytime or nighttime? Um, I don't know. I, it is, I can't see the light outside mm-hmm. because I'm a, a little bit more deeper and it's more underground mm-hmm. like. Let's find out where it is that you are. Allow yourself to see with your inner eyes. What is this place? It is, uh, it's like a, some kind of basement. Mm-hmm. But it is, I feel like, I've seen this before, it is, um, I, f- I have a feeling it is underneath a, or inside a pyramid. Mm-hmm. It is um, the black and white floor with little shiny stones, mm-hmm. like a mosaic floor. And on this, in this place, do you have a body there? Let's see if you have a physical body. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your body. Look at your feet. 
And bare feet. Bare feet. Look at your feet. Are they male or female feet? They're small, or, uh, like not very wide. I think they feel uh, they feel female. Feel female, yeah, very good. And, and how old does this female body feel? Um, See the number now. Twenty-one. Very good. And tell me, this body, does it have any type of clothing on? Uh, it is uh, a skirt that is right on or above by me, some mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. It's brownish, light brown skirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's from a little bit of warm material, mm -hmm. but I don't recognize it. And what is on the top? Anything? Um, I have a... My stomach is... Uh, it's open, but I do have something on my breast. Okay. And look at your hands. Do you have anything on your hands? I feel like I'm, I am wearing two balls, mm -hmm. one ball in one hand, one in the other. Mm -hmm. And what do they signify? What are they? There is something inside, uh, like a herb or a, power, a powder. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine this powder is used for? What comes to mind? It's rituals. Ritual. So, are you as part of this ritual? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, look around you and see if there's anyone in the room with you. I have a feeling that uh, if I walk a little bit further, mm -hmm. I can see somebody sitting in a chair, mm -hmm. but uh, they um, they don't feel, yeah, they look like a person, but also a little bit statue-like. Mm -hmm. And this body that you have, what does the face look like? What does your face look like? Um, my nose is a little bit um, smaller, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's a little bit uh, bent. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so now um, my face is a little bit moist. Mm -hmm. And um, I have. Uh, a little bit more bushy wing, uh, eyebrows, mm -hmm. and my hair is uh, tied back. Mm -hmm. It's nice and thick. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to understand what is this ritual all about? Why are you there? Um, It's um, like asking for a favor, mm -hmm. asking the gods for a favor mm -hmm. is the first thing that pops into mind. Very good. So we're going to find out what it is, the favor that you have requested. See it now. What are you asking for? Uh, It's uh, not for myself. Somebody asked uh, if the um, crops could grow. Mm -hmm. So, if we want to do a ritual about that one, mm -hmm. now I have a feeling that people ask uh, rituals mm -hmm. for us to do, mm -hmm. and then we do them. All right. 
Is this something that you do, or is this the first time that you do this ritual? No, it's my job to do them. All right. So what role do you play? Um, I think that I have a feeling that it will be, there is somebody else partaking in the rituals. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we were doing them together. All right. So let's find out who this other person is and how this ritual is done. Allow yourself now to see the whole ritual and explain it. It is something to do with um, the bowls and we put them on the table. There are more bowls there mm -hmm. with all kinds of powders and herbs and then we light them and uh, they give off smoke and um, that because it's a, a bit of a uh, compact area mm -hmm. uh, the room will fill with smoke and then we both of us we will um, inhale the smoke and then uh, we go into the, some kind of trance mm -hmm. all right so go ahead and see them lighting up the herbs in the bowls begin to see the room lighting up with that smoke feel yourself now going deeper and deeper to sleep what happens next Go on a, a travel, a mind travel. Mm -hmm. Together, we hold hands. Very good. And we ask the gods if they can have the crops grow better. And we dance. Mm -hmm. In it's not we're in the room, but it, we're not physically dancing. Mm -hmm. Very good. What happens next? The ritual is nice. And we dance and then we ask the gods and then when it's all done, we come back like we... It feels like a little bit of a sleep. We had sleep. And then we come back and then it's done. Very good, very good. So I'd like for you now to close that scene. Close that scene. Now let's go to another significant scene in that same lifetime. Allow yourself to progress to that scene now. Where are you? I have a feeling I'm still in that place, mm -hmm. but another time. Mm -hmm. And it has something to do with a mother and a baby. Mm -hmm. And um, um, she's asking something. Um, she asks, so it's, it's called, yeah, it's a favor, but they. It's our job to do it, so it's not a favor, but she's asking something to do, that we do something for her. Um, but I have doubts about it. Mm -hmm. I, because there's also a child involved, the baby. She has the baby with her. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your traveling when they bring this baby? I have a feeling she's asking something that I think we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what it is. See that now. Oh, 
uh, it is not that strange. She want, just wants to feed her baby and she wants her milk to uh, flow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she wants us to help her milk flow mm-hmm. in, with our ritual. But um, I had a feeling about it that... Uh, my bad feeling about it is that if we um, we help her and it doesn't work and her milk doesn't flow, the baby will die and it will be our fault. So I have a bad feeling about it. I don't mm-hmm. want to do it. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens next. Allow yourself to move forward in time and space to see the outcome of this ritual. What happens to this baby and mother? Yeah, I was right. The milk doesn't come and the baby dies. Mm -hmm. And we get to blame because um, it was the ritual. And she had so much faith in the ritual, but I said we shouldn't do it. Because uh, when it... um, It it will be our fault when the baby dies. Mm And we are blamed. So what happens next? Well, I feel that it is... um, It's not all that bad, but... um, She talks bad about us that we can't do the ritual. Because, and then we get no clients. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you now to close that scene and go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. See yourself now on the last day of that life. And look around you and see where you are. Look at the place. Look at your surroundings. See if there's anyone with you. Connect with your feelings. Um, I am. <clears throat> I have a feeling I'm inside, and um, it's so strange because. Uh, I don't know if it's my house or not, if it's uh, some kind of a hut, mm-hmm. but uh, I knew that I was going to die that day, and I went there uh, just to die, and I don't didn't want anybody with me, mm-hmm. so nobody's there. Mm-hmm. How old are you there? 41. Mm-hmm. So allow yourself to take the last breath of that lifetime, detaching yourself from that body. And as a spirit, you can look back at that lifetime. You could see what you have done, how you have impacted others' lives. You could see the purpose of being there in that lifetime. (coughs) What is the purpose of that lifetime? Let's find out what's causing that cough. (coughs) Focus in and see what that is. What is that? (coughs) What is that? (coughs) What is the message? It's a... It was so tight. Mm-hmm. But now it's vanishing. Mm-hmm. What was tightening? What is it that the soul went through to tighten her? What was that? 
identify it. Um, what did she need to go through? That was I so. Think that was my the part of my death because I was. Mm -hmm. Because that was the reason I died, I think. Mm -hmm. What was the reason that this body I died? I just couldn't breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. So allow that spirit to continue on its journey. <clears throat> and as you look back at that lifetime, let's take a look and see what was the purpose of that lifetime? You have to trust your instinct, mm -hmm. trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. When your intuition says no, you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. So what lesson was learned from that lifetime? That you just have to listen to what your intuition says, mm -hmm. what your gut says. Mm -hmm. Because it's always right. That's what I needed to learn, to mm -hmm. listen, to hear, mm -hmm. um, be open and not uh, listen to other people's opinions or when my mind says no or my heart says no, just don't do it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so how is that lifetime affecting <coughs> the lifetime of Sandra? <coughs> <coughs> How is it affecting her? <coughs> what is that? What's keeping her from speaking? Take a look and see. What energy is there? There's something up. Mm -hmm. Squeezing my throat. All right, let's find the origin. I'd like for you now to take a deep breath in and let's find the origin of what is squeezing your throat. I'm going to count from five back to one and you will find where it began. Taking a breath now on five, going to the origin of that squeezing in the throat. Four. Through time and space. Three. Allow the images to come. And one. Be there now. Where are you? Are you indoors or outdoors? Um, I believe I'm indoors. Mm -hmm. Take a look around you. What does this indoors look like? It's my room again mm -hmm. when I was little. Let's find out what's there. What's squeezing your throat? Um, uh, keeping me from speaking. Mm -hmm. Who's keeping you from speaking? Allow it to step forward and identify itself. What's keeping little Sandra from speaking? <coughs> I have a feeling that it's put there. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so I don't speak so much. Mm -hmm. Who put it there? Go back to that time when it was put there. 
feeling that <coughs> it has something to do with uh, the um, hands under my bed, mm -hmm. those, those reptilians. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why it is that they don't want little Sandra speaking. <coughs> I know. It is <coughs> because they don't want me to talk to my parents about it. Mm -hmm. Why is that? The, um, um, <coughs> because they can't come anymore then. Mm -hmm. I just have to s not speak about it. Mm -hmm. Now little Sandra, this is a free will planet. When you came here, you understood that it was your free will to do anything that you wanted to do. Would you like to speak now? Yes. All right. So I'd like for you to go ahead and address these reptilians and tell them to remove whatever it is that's keeping you from speaking. Tell them now. Please remove it. <clears throat> What do they say? They prefer that I just don't speak about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I want to speak about it and it's my free will. That's right. So I want you to bring out all of this courage, all of this bravery that this little girl has. And I want you now to command them to take that away. Bring up all of the courage and tell them, remove it now. Remove it now. They do it. Very good. <clears throat> so now that it has been removed, with this removal comes the memories. And you will understand why they didn't want you to speak. Allow yourself now to bring up all of those memories and to understand what happened. Begin to see it as a movie and tell me what you see. They showed me a lot more, but they just didn't want me to speak about it mm -hmm. because of my parents. <clears throat> they showed me all the beautiful places of the planet. Mm -hmm. But every time I was afraid, when I saw them, just like earlier, I was amazed how beautiful mm -hmm. the planet looks. Mm -hmm. What else has happened? I don't feel afraid anymore. Very them. good. So now that you do not feel afraid anymore, you are able to speak. We're now going back in time to before this little girl was born on this planet to find out the contracts that she had with these reptilians. So allow yourself now to begin to drift through time and space. I'm going to count now from 10 down to 1 as we journey back in time, back to the moment when these contracts were made with this group. 10. Going back now. Nine. Deeper. Eight. Deeper. Seven. 
deeper and deeper to sleep. On six. Down even more. Five. Four. To the contracts. Three. Allowing the images to come now. Two. And one. Be there now. Where are you? <clears throat> I feel like I'm in uh, something underground, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Describe this place for me. It is uh, uh, like the um, in a inside something inside mount or underground, mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> You have the. It's very high. Mm -hmm. The ceiling is very high, like. Um, uh, and on the walls. Uh, there is. Uh, like balconies carved in. Mm -hmm. And there are several stories, stores mm -hmm. of balconies. And um, what's in these balconies? There's houses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's where uh, where they live. All right. So let's take a <coughs> look and see what they look like. Yes, I see. <coughs> I'm um, in the middle of the in the center of the the inside cave thing mm -hmm. and um, I'm speaking to uh, a very large creature mm -hmm. so she and um, I believe I've seen her before she is uh, very large and the ones before were a little bit brownish, brownish mm -hmm. scaly mm -hmm. but uh, this one is more brownish and has um, the inside of the belly uh, is a little bit more lighter and uh, it has more iridescent colors mm -hmm. and um, it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. And as you look at yourself speaking to her, what do you look like there? Look at your body. Describe yourself to me. Hmm. I am. Uh, I think I'm male. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And a little bit more um, uh, feet with. Uh, like a little bit more like claws. Mm -hmm. But my overall skin is more brownish than her skin. And uh, we're about the same height, and I believe I am even bigger mm -hmm. than her. Mm -hmm. What does your face look like? Small eyes, mm -hmm. like lion eyes, like lion. <coughs> mm -hmm. And um, it's a uh, flat from my forehead to my nose. And I like the same color as lion eyes. Um, Do you small look holes? This nose, not not a, really a nose, more holes. Mm -hmm. It's a nose. <clears throat> And do you look reptilian? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like for you to understand what it is, what the reason is that you are with this group. Is this your family? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is... Um, I have a feeling that um, I'm part of that family. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And um, she, uh, we're agreeing on me going to Earth mm -hmm. oh. and um, for what purpose? I just want to see what it's like mm -hmm. and um, to be able to report back, I think mm -hmm. it's uh, So connect with her heart and tell me what you feel from her heart. What feeling do you get? She's not my partner, mm -hmm. but um, like somebody is always also on my mission. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just agreeing, but I... I see it different when we discuss the matter. Mm -hmm. it, I take it more lightly than um, I am. I should take it. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so let's see what happens next. I'd like for you to go to the moment in time when you decide, as a soul, to journey to Earth. Be there now. And tell me where you are. What is this place? It's a black table. Mm -hmm. And um, there are more yeah, like entities of people around the table that mm -hmm. we're discussing. Um, then I want to go to Earth, or no? Then I have to go to Earth. Mm -hmm. um, Let's find out why you need to go to Earth. What is the purpose? Yes, it is um, it has something to do with um, hmm. connect. It has something to do with the bridge mm -hmm. uh, between bridge between dimensions. Mm -hmm. What has happened to the dimensions? Uh, it feels like there needs to be a mediator. Mm -hmm. um, Well, they, it's, they show me like <clears throat> to connect the dimensions. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't really make sense, but it's like you're sh you're they're um, shifting two worlds together. Mm -hmm. When then and then they touch again, and uh, that's what I see. And then. At first I see a space in between the 
two dimensions of mm -hmm. the two worlds and then um, the, there needs to be a bridge, they need to come together. So I'd like for you to see your role and purpose. What do you do to bridge these dimensions? How do you operate? Because I will be able to see mm -hmm. <clears throat> into different dimensions and be the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So let's find out what it is that you are going to be born with in the lifetime in which you are going to be, Sandra. What gifts will you be bringing into this body with you? Seeing and knowing. Mm -hmm. What is it that you will be seeing? Seeing in multiple dimensions mm -hmm. and then being able to connect the dimensions again. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to see in your mind's eye how it will look when the dimensions need repair, need fixing. How does that look? What will Sandra see? How will this look to her? She will be able to see into a uh, few dimensions, not all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like seeing through a couple of layers. Mm -hmm. And it's like you see um, we have transparent paper and then paper behind that and behind that and then you see through the transparent paper. Mm -hmm. That is what you will be able to see. Well, it looks something like rain. Mm -hmm. What will it look like? The rain is the first sign. Mm -hmm. It's the first sign to uh, be a different to the, to be the um, the first sign mm -hmm. for the different dimensions. So, so when <clears throat> she sees the sand, the the rain, what comes next? When she accepts the rain. Mm -hmm. And she accepts it as a dimension and she's she wants to see and when she's ready she's ready she will see mm -hmm. past the rain and then she will see more yes what if she shuts this off as a child yes she shut it off when she was a child because it was too much mm -hmm. she was so scared all the time and she thought she was going to become mad and they would have to lock her up and uh, then she shut it off yes so tell me how she is doing now with this she's getting more and more glimpses that mm -hmm. are the um, that's the diamonds that she sees. Mm -hmm. So those diamonds, are they a different dimension? Or are they warnings or, or yeah. clues? Little, they're little... Um, the diamond lights she sees is our little... Not like warnings, but our little signs mm -hmm. to get her warmed up mm -hmm. for bigger things to see. So this is just the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what should she do now that she understands that she has this this task? Uh, she should allow. 
that you should allow to see it again mm -hmm. and um, this time she won't be afraid. All right. So let's find out what it is that Sandra has created in order for her not to see. Let's take a look and see if she has created a boundary within her third eye. Yes. All right, let's go even deeper and tell me what it looks like. It looks like um, a filter, or like you use a filter over a lens. Mm -hmm. And how thick is this filter? Um, say maybe five centimeters. All right. So what can we use today in order to remove or dissolve this lens? Move um, to remove it, we can use all kind of rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. All right. All the colors of the rainbow. So I'd like for you now to see in your mind's eye a ray of rainbow light going directly into your third eye. I'd like for Sandra to see what this rainbow light is doing to that filter. dissolving the filter. Mm -hmm. Very good. And now that the filter has been removed, what would you like to tell her now about her abilities that she came here to do? <coughs> She's afraid. She was afraid of seeing entities. She wasn't able to handle it back then. How can she handle it now, as that filter is removed? She understands what it is now. Mm -hmm. She will. She will see. Mm -hmm. The filter is gone. Very good. Now, as part of her meditation, she is able to see a lot of things. How can she use her meditation? in order to advance herself spiritually. <clears throat> in her meditation, she mm -hmm. can... She can visit anything she likes. Mm -hmm. She can be anywhere she wants. Mm -hmm. And it will be more vivid now she, the lens is removed. Mm -hmm. She can see everything she wants. But there are things that she doesn't want to see, such as in nightmares. When she was visited by negative entities, what is the purpose of those nightmares and bad experiences? What happens? They... Uh Some of the nightmares, mm -hmm. the really strange ones she had, were um, induced. Mm -hmm. Who induced them? Were these the reptilians? The hands under the bed? No. All right. No, they, they're more, um, more of energy like, but they're negative. I don't, I don't feel that the reptilians are very negative. Mm -hmm. No. All right. It's her family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other things that she does, it seems that she floats around the room. What is happening during her sleep time? Is she astral traveling? Mm. She felt herself floating through the room. And the TV and radio turned on. What was happening to her at that time when she was 24?
So you experienced a blackout. A blackout? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Go ahead and take her back to that time, taking a deep breath in and being there once again. Feel yourself drifting and floating through that room, looking around, feeling it, expressing it, what's happening. There's some time missing between the floating and mm -hmm. being back in bed. Mm -hmm. Where did she go during this missing time? To another dimension. All right. <clears throat> Is she doing work in that dimension? Well, she will be, but that back then it was just, uh, just a small trip. Okay, just for a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, into a different dimension. Yes. Okay. Now, when we first started out, you told her that the reptilians took her back to Orion. Was it Orion? Yes. All right. Is this where her lineage is from, or is it from elsewhere? Yes, she's been there many times, mm -hmm. yes. So, if she is from Or Orion, where is this creator being called Anu? It's more back. All right. Way back. So she wanted to get more information about Anu. She wanted to know if that was really a part of her and who this was, and what was the purpose of creating all of those souls? Can you answer that, or shall we take her back? Take her back, please. Very good. So taking a deep breath in now, we're going to travel back through time and space, allowing yourself to see you going traveling, on five, going back, four, through time and space, to the beginning, three, looking for the life of Anu. to allow the images to come and one be there now what is this place it's um it's like an energy ball, mm -hmm. like a planet consists of only energy, mm -hmm. and I'm. It's like using the energy as clay, and then molding it into a into a, um, a spirit or into an entity. Mm -hmm. Putting a special love inside them. Sending them to Earth. Mm -hmm. And what is the purpose for creating all of these souls? To raise vibration on Earth. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out how many souls did you create? There are lots of souls. Mm -hmm. There are 
almost a thousand, mm -hmm. a thousand or more even. So as the creator of all of these souls, are all of these souls incarnated now on earth? No. No. Not anymore. Not anymore. So let's find out if this aspect of Anu is now part of Sandra. Is she part of one of these souls? Is she a child of Anu? No, she's part of Anu. Mm -hmm. Explain that to her, please. She created her soul group. Mm -hmm. She wasn't a she then. Mm -hmm. She just was. She mm -hmm. created the soul group to raise the vibration. She saw it earlier and she sends the souls to earth. The souls, some souls are, um, are incarnating and some souls are just being there as energy mm -hmm. amongst all the other energies. And we showed it to her last time mm -hmm. she meditated. Yes. She saw that when you are an energy, you have, when you have two choices, or back then you had two choices, being incarnated, being an energy, and when you choose to be an energy, you have the task to go to earth and um, neutralize the negative energy. So you go to the source of the negative energy, it just consists of energy, we, we showed it to her earlier. And then you, well, it's not sacrificing, sacrificing, but you just give yourself up to neutralize the negative energy so that the negative energy can be transformed. And um, that was mainly almost 50% of the souls went to that cause to neutralize negative energy on earth. Mm -hmm. The other parts, they incarnated a couple okay. of times. So how is she doing as far as this incarnated soul? Is she neutralizing things? Mm. That's not her role anymore. Oh, okay. To Very. neutralize. Not anymore. No. Now it's with the dimensions. Yes. Very good. Now is this role of preaching or, or uh, connecting these dimensions, does that affect her body, her human body? She has to raise her vibrations so mm -hmm. she can be more present in different dimensions. Mm -hmm. she's, she's also, she's trying now not to eat meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes she eats chicken. <laughs> How is that affecting her bowels? Her intestines? Well, if she's just stuck to the diet, mm -hmm. then she wouldn't be hurting. She knows that. So I know you've probably told her before. Yes. But let's tell her again. What kind of diet should be she be eating? Non- Meat, no meat. Mm -hmm. If she will, pref she well, she prefers the chicken, and she can do it sometimes. But she has to know it lowers her vibration just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So mostly no, no meats mm -hmm. and um, no wheats, mm -hmm. no bread, no mm -hmm. yeast. It's not. It's not for her body. Okay. She has to, well, preferably a complete liquid diet, but she, she won't listen. Mm -hmm. Liquid diet, but that will be from later. She has to grow into that because it's difficult for her to stick to the liquid diet. So liquid would be liquid vegetables or fruits, yes, things fruits like and that? vegetables, liquid. Mm -hmm. Just blend them and then 
she wouldn't have to chew. <laughs> and will that alleviate all of the bloating and all yes. of the hurting? Yeah. Okay. Can I request today to begin a healing process of her digestive system so that when she clears this out, she'll be able to have more appeal for these foods, more discipline. If we clear her body now, clear the reminders, the addictions that she has to meet. Yes. All right. So for the record, tell her what it is that you're using. We're using green light mm -hmm. and scanning it all over her body to remove the, the taste for meat. Very good. Let me know when you're done with that. Yes, she also has to use the bathroom now. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and touch her shoulder. When I touch her shoulder, she can open her eyes. She will remain in this deep trance. But when she comes back, she'll go actually deeper. Eyes open. And as we scan that body, let's take a look at how the intestines and the digestive system look now. Now that she has released the pressure. She has some blockages in her intestines. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look and see what those blockages are created from. What's the origin? It looks dark. Mm -hmm. Let's do a scan. And I'm going to bring my hand over the intestines as I do. I'll bring the energy up. Up even higher. 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 And higher. And you can express yourself now this energy there. Do you have a male or female energy? Male. Male. What may I call you? John. John. John, how old are you? 86. 86? What year is it, John? 1836. 1836. John, how did you lose that body of yours? What happened to you? Cancer. Cancer. Yes. Mm hmm. And what happened to you, John? after you left that body? I just wondered. Mm -hmm. just, just wondered until you found this body. Yes. How old was this body when you found Four. Four. What was happening to this little girl at four years old that made her so vulnerable? What was happening in her life? Um. What was she feeling? What was she doing? That made her easy for you to connect with her. She was feeling vulnerable and you rejected. Mm -hmm. Is that how you felt, John? Yes. What were you looking for, John? What were you looking for in this little child? Oh, I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So you've been with her for a long time. What have you been doing to her all this time? 
I've been keeping her company. Mm-hmm. Like a friend? Yes. What do you tell her? Not to eat certain foods. Mm-hmm. What kind of food do you tell her not to eat? White, mm -hmm. white flower foods. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need to eat them. Did those foods hurt you, John? Yes. Mm -hmm. They caused cancer. They did. They will cause cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what else have you been making her feel? Well, I've been warning her. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't listen, does she? No. No, no never. Never. No. <laughs> She's a little stubborn, isn't she? Yes, she keeps on eating it. Mm -hmm. So what happens to her body? She says she can't lose weight. Are you affecting her that way? Were you very skinny, John? What happened to your body? I couldn't absorb all the e the foods in my intestines. Mm -hmm. Everything was wrong. The foods that I eat were wrong. Mm -hmm. So have you been helping her put on some weight so she can absorb these foods? Are you making her heavy? Or she, sometimes. Sometimes. Yes, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not always. Not always. What about now, John? Yes, I make her eat more mm -hmm. because, well, you better have it on you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she won't be too skinny? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you can better be a little bit heavier than skinny. Mm -hmm. So you see, John, the problem with that is that this is her life, not yours. You already got a shot at this life. Well, I know better. Mm, you know better. Yes. But this is not your body. You are a guest in her body and an uninvited guest. Did she invite you? Oh, well, she didn't say no. Mm, but that doesn't mean that you can take over. Imagine, John, if someone came into my house and I didn't know they were there and they were hiding and they didn't tell me they were there. <laughs> Do you think that it's fair for someone to be hiding in my house with me not knowing it? Well, I think I was doing her service. Oh, I see. Well, let's find out. I'm going to ask now to see if Sandra agrees. Sandra, do you agree that John should be a guest in your house, making you eat, total always telling you what to do? No. 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 This is your body. You are sovereign to this body. This is yours. Yes. What do you want to tell John? Please leave me. I don't need you. All right. So take a deep breath in now. And John, do you understand now that you are not a welcome guest? Well, it's the first time she's telling me that. Ma, ah, how does that make you feel? Surprised. Surprised. But John, we don't want to send you off again without knowing what to do. I know that that's what you were looking for. You were looking for company. Yeah. John, we want to help you today. Inside of you, John, is a spark of light. This is the God spark. This is the spark that created you as a soul. I, I want heard you about it. find it now. Find that spark within your heart. And tell me when you find it. Everybody has one. Find that spark now, John. It it's very, very small. So I'm going to ask you to use your mind to expand that light. Make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Make that light so big that you can walk into it. And tell me how that light feels.
How does that light feel? So strange. I never knew I had it. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to just feel it now. Feel it and tell me what that light feels like. It feels like Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Feels like love. Yes. Very good. You see, John, when you lost that body, this was the light that you needed to follow. That light within your heart. This takes you directly back home to your Creator. This is the love that you will feel when you're welcome back home. Are you ready now to feel that love? Yes. Yes. But first, there's something you need to tell Sandra about all of this time in which you were confused. I'm sorry. I didn't know better. Mm-hmm. Sandra, can you forgive John for not knowing any better? Yes. All right. So, Sandra, I want you to see where it is that John is connected to you. I want you to find those cords, those cables, and I want you to cut them, disconnect them, and as you do, they will dissolve. Cut them all. And John, now that you are free, I'd like for you to go ahead and go up through the top of her head right here. And there is someone there waiting for you. He is my helper. He is Archangel Michael. He's been waiting. What does he tell you, John? That I should see my family. Mm-hmm. Come with him. Very good. So go ahead and go with him and tell me when you get there, John. Tell me who you who welcomes you home. It's my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. Very good. Give them a warm welcome yourself. Embrace them and may the light of the universe always accompany you, John. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very good. And now I'd like for you to go ahead and allow Archangel Raphael, the healer, to put his beautiful green healing light in that space where John was occupying. Allow it to heal it and to seal it. Is there anything that you would recommend for Sandra to take, such as supplements or anything else that she needs for her health? Well, we told her that she needed vitamin A. Mm -hmm. well, that She's taking that. Will that help her with her sleep? No. What will help her with her sleep? Well, she knows it already. She had a little bit of a lack of serotonin mm -hmm. because of her lifestyle. Yes. And... Um, we think she can uh, uh, take a little bit less of them, mm -hmm. of the supplements she's taking. She can easily cut, take a little bit less, mm -hmm. but she will still have a, a little bit of a lack of serotonin. She likes the feeling of the serotonin, mm -hmm. and um, she's not really producing it herself. Let's take a look in her body and see what is she is lacking in order to produce this. <laughs> she needs to exercise. All more. right. Will the exercise help her sleep better? Well, she can stop taking the pills in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then she should, she should come off the couch we tell her that all the time mm -hmm. because she sits on the couches because her other work she does work after the behind the laptop and she sits on the couch with her dog and 
It's comfy, but she needs to go out and walk. She doesn't need to go to the gym, but she just needs to walk mm -hmm. a couple good. of times. And that will help her. Mm -hmm. And she talks about being very hot, going on and off. What's causing that? Yeah, there's two things. It has something to do with energy flow in her body. Mm -hmm. And um, when she when she stops with the supplements in the morning and uh, the melatonin mm -hmm. she's also taking, we asked her to take that because it will help her more relax in the session. Mm -hmm. um, when she 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 gets her energy flows, but when she starts walking her body will f uh, get a better energy flow and that will dissolve as well so it's not her hormones the doctor th thinks she's in menopause or something mm -hmm. it's, she's not she just needs to walk a little bit more and um, uh, take a little bit less of the supplements very good. fine very good is there anything else that i did not ask that you would like to tell sandra now well, she had the earth, you see, uh, first she had the uh, first session she did uh, one time ago. She, we told her there was a bit of an urgency mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we feel she has to uh, hurry up a little bit more with uh, the dimension work. And that's also the um, rush, she's feeling a little bit of a rush mm -hmm. of uh, that she she has to do this and that and she she found the QHHT and that's that's really great because she's learning about the dimensions mm -hmm. and um, she's really eager to get a lot of information uh, about the dimensions she has to learn a lot in this mm -hmm. body because she doesn't know everything but she's getting all the information from the clients so she's learning and she will be able to see more filter is gone so she can put the dots together and she can finally do her work as a bridge between the dimensions and uh, we told her earlier that she will be teaching others about dimensions as well that's a part of her that's the work she will be doing as being the bridge because when she tells other people about uh, the dimensions and uh, what happens there and how, how it works with vibrations and how you can raise your vibration and be present in in maybe even more dimensions for some entities um, she will not be ha only helping entities in the third dimension but also in other dimensions but she has to uh, up her vibration more so um, yeah the liquid dye would be mm -hmm. great but Little by little. Yeah, that is that's difficult for her. Mm -hmm. But she will be, be doing the when she's more up in her vibration she and she will achieve that with the liquid diet, she will be able to help more multiple um entities in multiple dimensions as well. Wonderful. And uh, but she 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 feels the urgency because it is true she she needs to fulfill that bridge to be like this. We also told her in one of her meditations that um, she will be writing some books, <laughs> mm -hmm. but she is not very good in the Dutch language, mm -hmm. but uh, that's okay. We will, we will give her the information in meditation and when she's a little bit further on the road, she can channel that information as well. Then she doesn't need to be in, in meditation and she can just sit on her dinner table and then she ju can just write the information that we give her and she can put that in the book. Wonderful. Yeah, there will Wonderful. be two books. Fantastic. Is there anything else or do you feel that we are complete now? Yes, she asks to us in her meditations as well that she needs money for things to do and mm -hmm. we facilitate that. 
All right. She wanted to do the the event in Amsterdam. Yes. What is your recommendation? Yes, we will facilitate the money for that. Mm -hmm. She manifested mm -hmm. a session, but there will be you know, mm -hmm. manage some more money. She she tried to manifest some more money for other causes, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we will only help her with the causes. Ah. That is in line with her purpose. Very good. And this is, this is in line with her work. Yes. Very good. Are we complete? Yeah, she also was wondering about information. She wanted to have more skills in her sessions. Mm -hmm. So she can mix more of uh, other skills in her sessions, and um, we will help her with that as well. Very good. Yes. Very good. Is that all? Yes. Thank you so much for your help wide awake, completely alert and conscious, feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. Wow. How do you feel? As if I've really had a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. How long do you feel this journey was? Sure. I think it was an hour. Yeah, you felt yeah. like it was an hour? Yeah. Mm. We're on two hours and ten minutes. <laughs> really? <laughs> 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 that, that was not... Uh, no, it really felt like an hour. <laughs> you did well. Yeah. You did fantastic. Yeah. So it was good, huh? Yeah, it was. Oh. So what do you think about this session? Yeah, it was... Um, interesting, huh? It was very interesting. Well... I was, when I was still in my grown-up life, mm -hmm. I was still afraid of hands under my bed. Yeah. And what about I, now? How do you feel no, now? No. That is true. I, I jump mm -hmm. from the back of my bed and I, I daren't work, walk uh, to my bed in, uh, with, in the dark. And, and I'm, now? I'm not afraid of anything, only the hands under my bed. And now? Now you understand? <laughs> no, I understand. Now, and I am so uh, relieved. And, uh, and now I dare to walk beside my bed again. <laughs> it is so... Amazing, huh? Yeah, it is. It did well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was so... I, I felt the emotion yeah. as a little kid being so afraid of the hands under mm -hmm. my bed. And mm -hmm. uh, it was nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh... So do you want to keep this private? Or you want to share it? There's, there's some personal stuff in there. Yeah. Or maybe some personal stuff out if you can. Yeah. So it's not... Um, mm -hmm. we, can, we can cut some things out, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did well. You did Thank fantastic. You. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> yeah. You made it. You made it. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So... Explain to everybody why you wanted this session. Well, I had a lot of questions mm -hmm. about um, uh, some things I experienced in my meditations. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you think it's all in your head and you're all imagining it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I can, can really put some things in place. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid of the hands under my bed anymore. The hands coming under <laughs> yeah. the bed. So yeah. now that you understand this, yeah. and you have children of your own. Yeah. When a child tells you I'm afraid of something under the bed, yeah, how would you react now? Well, before we, we started this, I was always saying, well, it's a nightmare, please let it be. But mm -hmm. 
uh, I think when you understand what it is, you are less afraid. Mm -hmm. Because I was really afraid of the hands on my bed as a child. Right. But I also told you, as a <laughs> grown up, I didn't, I didn't walk up. I don't walk up my bed because I'm still afraid of hands on my bed. You were but still afraid. I, I were. Yeah, I were. Yeah. So and now? now, not. No. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. Because so would you tell your child it's yeah. not a nightmare, or you would try to? Talk it out. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, I will different. Try to talk it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. because when you understand it, it's nightmares are, are really scary, and I was scared for a large part of my life. And mm -hmm. uh, I think my ch my children deserve more to be Wonderful. not afraid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you yourself are a QHHT practitioner. Yes, so how did it feel to be on this side doing? It was great. Talking. It was a really great gift. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it was a great gift. Yes. Thank you. And right now we are in the UK. Uh, we are in South End on Sea. And yeah. where are you living? Where do you uh, live? The Netherlands, in Holland. Yes. So if anybody yeah. wants to get a hold of you, how do they find you? Uh, I have a website. Uh, it's uh, QHHT uh, with a how do you call a dash or underscore a dash, uh -huh. and then uh, Nederland. Dot nl it's very dutch but okay so <laughs> you'll people. you'll have that information yeah so do you recommend this to other people I, yes because i'm a big fan and this is something everybody should do i was really <laughs> i'm so excited to sit next to you <laughs> this is really i could not not ever imagine having a session with you well if you want a session with me all you have to go is to my website albawyman.com go to the hypnosis tab Sign up for my newsletter, and about once a month, approximately, I send out a newsletter telling everybody where I'm going to be. And uh, as soon as you get that newsletter, click on that link. Is that what you did? Yes. <laughs> I, I refreshed every second because I know it will be gone in 10 minutes or so. Yeah. So, so you have to sign up there. I don't just give out appointments because there's a lot, a lot of people on my mailing list. So whoever gets in has been somebody who has been sent to me. And that's how I that's how I accept appointments. Divine yeah. timing. So <laughs> if it's your time, you'll be here, just like yeah. Sandra was. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this session. I did. You did. <laughs> yes. And until the next one. Thank you. Bye bye. Ooh.